I was skeptical about AI when I first started playing with it, but now in the last few weeks, I finally get it. In this video, we're gonna go over the best practices and some strategies and tips for using AI, perfect for beginners and advanced people, but we're gonna go over some specific points. ChatGPT can help you out with a ton of different things, including productivity, writing, and idea generation. In this video, we're gonna really focus on getting the best responses no matter what you're working on. So whether you're a student or an employee or employer or CEO or you're a professor or something like that, this video will help you out using ChatGPT. We're gonna go over six main areas. We'll talk about plagiarism, We'll talk about the inherent bias of AI tools, your responsibility, getting better answers, and finally, the best one is teaching ChatGPT your exact style and tone so it can write just like you. These tips can be useful for blogging or writing content, but you could use them working online in any case, whether you're an influencer and you're creating social posts, if you're a YouTuber, if you're a podcaster, or maybe you're a freelancer and you do a handful of different things, all these tips are gonna teach you how to use ChatGPT most effectively. First, let's talk plagiarism. Now, I'm not a lawyer, this is not legal advice, so consult your copyright attorney. However, there's a chance that if you're using content from ChatGPT, that it's very similar to other content out there online. So the data set that OpenAI uses is a bunch of books, other online sources, and it's trained on that data set. The thing is, you know, it's probably going to give you something unique that may not be detected by other plagiarism tools, which is cool. But what about all the other people that are getting output, maybe really similar output is what you're getting. Maybe they're looking for something really similar. So there's a chance that the output is similar. Now, I don't know what ChatGPT or other tools do to provide unique output, but there's no guarantee of that. So look out for plagiarism. One thing you could do is be sure to insert your own information as some of the input data so that that makes it unique. If you're able to, you could change some of the content from the output as well, and that would also make it more unique. Number two, we'll talk biases. So these tools, like any chatbot, have inherent biases, and that can be related to the data set that they were trained on, or it could be related to the algorithm. Both can introduce a bias. Now, with sophisticated tools like ChatGPT, you can ask for the counterpoint. You can ask for arguments against whatever it just stated, or you could say, you know, reverse the position if you don't adopt whatever uh, stance they've taken. So you can change the reference point and then end up removing the bias. That's a very effective way to do it. Number three is personal responsibility. Now, this is up to you. I'm not here to judge you or tell you what to do. But basically, if you're using an AI tool to create your content and it is the primary driver, it's the primary source of the content, you probably should be transparent about it. So if you're publishing a blog post, you can say, this post was created with the help of an AI tool. I checked over it and I verified it. Now, I would say if you're providing all the input information or the majority of the input information for a prompt and you're getting an output, for example, let's say I want to write a intro for a podcast. Maybe it's just a few hundred words or so. Maybe I put in my outline for what I'm gonna cover in the podcast and then I tell ChatGPT to write an intro. Well. I provided all the input information. I'll probably change it and put it in my sort of own style and my own words. So I probably am not gonna disclose that if I ask for an intro. But if you're writing a thousand word blog post and you're getting all that output from ChatGPT and you really don't change much, you don't do any research, you just get the output, I would probably disclose that you used an AI tool to help you write that. I'm gonna pause here and ask you if you have any tips, if you have any cool prompts or strategies that you like to use for ChatGPT, please leave a comment. I would love to learn more. I am trying to learn as much as I can and you're a great source out there, so please leave me a comment. If you disagree with any of my points, for example, the plagiarism or the biases, leave a comment too. I'm Again, I'm trying to learn here. So leave a comment, let me know what you think. Next is getting more answers and more detailed answers. When you first start using ChatGPT, 
you're probably going to put in kind of short prompts, not too specific. That's fine. You're going to be able to ask follow-up questions. And there's some great follow-up questions that you can ask to get more details. The thing is, That's just a starting point. So once you put in your first prompt, you can ask follow-up questions. You can ask for different contexts or different details. So maybe you're asking about a certain topic area and then you want to understand the historical and economic impacts. So you can ask for those details and then it'll give you more content in the areas that you asked for. And you may not think about those right off the bat. And there's a lot of prompts that you can use as follow-up questions. Now, let's say you're looking for titles for a blog post or a YouTube video. Well, maybe you ask for a few different titles that you can use based on the topic that you're going to cover. Well, you could just ask for 10 more. Hey, ChatGPT, can you give me 10 more and make them even more clickable, make them even more curious, and then you'll get even better answers. Now, as time went on, I realized the more context that I provided ChatGPT, the better answers I got. So if I mentioned I'm going to interview someone for a YouTube video, usually I ask these questions. Usually it lasts about an hour long and here's the person's biography. Can you provide me 20 questions that I could ask that are insightful, that'll help drive a very deep conversation. You're gonna end up with a lot more detail than asking for interview questions for a podcast, right? So the more detail you provide, the better answers you're gonna get. And in the description, I'll put a handful of different follow-up prompts that you could provide, like give me 10 more, dumb it down, make it more complicated. I'll put a handful of them down there in the text of the description so you could check them out and use them for yourself. They're perfect for follow-up questions. Next is just getting better answers. So I alluded to it before, but the more details that you can put into the question, the better. So if you could provide context for what you're doing, if you could provide context for the kind of output that you actually want to get. So if you want to get an HTML formatted document with subheadings, you should mention that. If you want to get a table format so that you could paste it into Google Sheets or Excel or any anything else, then you could ask for that specific format. So the more detailed you are for the output, for the context, the better answer you're going to get. So I mentioned before, if you're doing some kind of interview, if you could provide as much detail about the way you're doing the interview and what it's for, you're going to end up with a much better output. Now let's switch it around, right? Let's say you need a cover letter for a job that you want to apply for. If you could provide information about the company, the role, your background, your experience, all those details, it's going to be a much better cover letter than just a general cover letter for an IT job. So the more detail, the better. And finally, ChatGPT can actually analyze a writing sample. So you could provide your actual writing, your actual voice, so it can help identify your style. It's fairly straightforward to do, but it's not obvious. Like I didn't know that you could do this. I wanted to be able to like train chat GPT on how I write so it would sound natural. Before I show you the prompt for that, I just want to mention I have free AI resources and tools. Basically, it's inside a course platform, but it's 100% free. So just follow the link in the description. You enter your name and email address, and then I send you login information. So do check it out. I put a lot of stuff on there that I don't share here on YouTube. So all you have to do is tell ChatGPT to analyze the style and tone of voice of the following sample. You can say, this was an email that I wrote, or here's a set of emails that I wrote, here's a blog post, whatever the content is, you could just say, analyze for style, this is how I write, and for all the following responses, please use that style, apply that style, and tone for the rest of the responses. And then you end up something that sounds pretty darn close to you. It's absolutely amazing and highly recommend you check that out. And you may be thinking, you can also insert other people's tone. So if you really like the way that Tim Ferriss writes or Mr. Money Mustache, you can insert that and say, here's a couple blog posts based on this person, analyze that style and write all the responses just like that. 
Here's one bonus tip. You can get some output and then say, add some jokes in there, make it more humorous, put in wordplay or puns, and then you'll end up with something that's a little bit lighter. I usually like to do that to punch up whatever it is that I'm doing just to make it a little more interesting and I like to laugh. So if you dig this video, hit the like button, really appreciate it. Check out some of the other videos on ChatGPT. I've done a few, including one where I show how to write a blog post start to finish in, a, in about two minutes or so using ChatGPT.